right good morning everyone this is part two um i did forget to put the camera on to finish this off so i'm going to redo it again because it didn't work don't know why it didn't work it worked in places but it was very very fine crackling so i'm going to try it the other way and what i've noticed about that particular this uh, do and dry clay is that it does slightly shrink so that's something you have to be aware of see it's slightly shrunk because it's dried i do like it however i like the end result so we're going to do that again this time i'm going to do it slightly different so i've cut my four by four sorry five by five inch <coughs> excuse me board and uh, we'll go from there and see how we get on now hang on because i've just spilt some uh, water which i uh, didn't mean to do like that i'll leave that there first thing i'm going to do i've got my paper tissue paper ready so i'll make another one and it's going to be the opposite to that see so first i'm going to do i'm going to gesso this and i've got this uh art basics heavy gesso which i do like to no i'm not i'm going to use the normal paint i'm going to use just the acrylic the white acrylic oh dear Right, I'm just going to use this uh, a white acrylic. And I'm going to use my little brush here, just like a normal paintbrush. I'm going to wet it first. And that makes it quite a thick paint. I want it to go all over and this will seal the board anyway we're going to dry this and give it another coat I think yeah just dry this off I'm going to pick it up so I can actually see that it's drying should be enough so I've not put the water on it the second time the first time was just basically to make it spread sides right so I'll put that to soak now what I'm going to do is to um, glue this on, so I'm going to use the Mod Podge. To glue it on. I get my other brush, I've got this uh, one that will spread it a little bit further and faster. Right, 
Now, I find this Mod Podge to what I used to use years ago quite thick. But that's fine. We can spread that, thin that out. Try and get it spread evenly. Like that. Well that's a wash. Well you're, gonna, well you're gonna need that again anyway. So we're just gonna lay this on. And we want it about there. Yeah, maybe it should have come down a little bit. I'm not sure if I can peel that off. Let's just see without ripping it. Yeah, we managed to do that. I wanted to bring it down a little bit. That's it. Now, trouble is by doing that, I've now got um, lines in it, but that's fine. I'm not fussed about things like that, really. <coughs> things will... I like the little odd crease and that. It uh, makes it interesting anyway. Okay, so we've got that. Now, what I'm going to do is just attach some water to the edge. This is a one way of getting rid of your excess if you don't want to cut it. It's like that soaking. Just doing it to the edge. It's not going to hurt it. And then all you do is peel that off. And it more or less peels away for you. You can sand any of that down afterwards. What you don't want on. There you go. That's fine. So we're back to that. So I'm going to take the glue again, and obviously, just going to paint this on once more just to give it a coat. And then we're just going to dry that off. Now I could let that dry naturally. But because it's a tutorial, I'm going to help it along. Now let that cool down, but we'll go back and do that again. Now the ones I used yesterday were these, which was the part one, which is a fine line crackle varnish by Pentart. Then I used the number two fine line crackle varnish uh, component one and two. Okay, 
that was number two, the last one, obviously. And you know, you are supposed to put it on pretty thick. And it dries clear. So I'm going to leave that, let that dry, and put that somewhere safe. Wash my brush, obviously. And when that's dried, I'll come back and share with you um, when I'm adding this one, the crackle medium one. So, that's that one, and that one. Now, what I wanted to share with you as well, and I've got to make the border for that one, <coughs> so we'll do that one again shortly. But I just want to share something with you. Now, I know I've been watching some videos online and I'm thinking, no, I did that when I was a kid. Um, some people trying to make out that what I'm going to show you now is a new thing. It's not. I did this in a, um, an art class that nobody showed me. I just decided um, I, the women I've watched, they're saying it was an accident what they did. Well, mine was an accident because I was in, like I say, in an art class and I did something and left it overnight. I had to come back the following day when we had art again. Well, the following week when we had art again, actually, because it was once a week. And I, I noticed what I'd done had really... And it's not the first time it's been done, so it's not me creating this completely from the beginning. I know. I know that, because I know other people have probably done the same thing. And it's doing this kind of paper. It's making um, flexible paper, you see? So what I did, this was a tissue that I had, like that, and it's durable, you can use it, it does rip still, um, but that's the first one. But like I said, when I was doing this, I thought, oh wow, yeah, um, I can now use that paper in my scrapbook at home. This has a layer on. Um, and it's a uh, vintage paper. This is 1940s. And we do sell this in newspaper form. So you can buy the actual newspaper of the 1940s, 19th of June, from us. Uh, look under the uh, em um, ephemera kits. Or ephemera. Ephemera, however you say it, just look under it on the shop. So that really, to me, although it's made it crinkly um, and durable, I can still give that another layer of the mixture I'm going to share with you and that was the other bit that I did as well so this was another napkin this was before and this was after I'd applied this particular um mixture I'm going to share with you and but the thing is look it's durable um this for scrapbooking is fantastic but I please please accept what I say it is not something new I know somebody might say oh well, I did that by accident which they've done it was an accident it's you know it probably was to them but it's not a new idea it's been around for a long long time and I discovered it myself because of a mistake I made uh, many 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 years ago when I was in school so I'm going to share with you see I mean this is just like dead easy but it's durable depends on which one you use and this I use with the double layer I think it was yeah but it, it can now be cut and used in my scrapbooking so you need something plastic for the bottom and I just used this last night okay and then um, you take a mixture which doesn't look very good <laughs> 
like that and what that is is just glue we used to use in school clear glue you can use any glue but use the clear glue it's the cheapest one you buy this big bottle for about 99 cents or something like that and in mine i did add this uh, gel antique so i just added that as a colorant basically put half of glue and a quarter of water and then i used my brush use a wide brush if you can because the mixture's just right so I'm just going to do this, mix it up again because it needs mixing. And I've got two here, I think, yeah. So then what you do is, you just paint on this glue mixture on your plastic. Just paint it on. like that and then get your tissue paper and lay it on do it as flat as you can like that and then go over it with the glue again now see I've done that and dragged it see what that happened but I'm glad it wasn't on the picture itself so you do have to be careful and make sure you plenty on your brush oops a daisy like that and you do want to cover it because you want both sides done And you just leave that to dry like that don't matter if it has a crease or two so be it what I would suggest is on one side so you want to be able to pick it up off the deck is just to do that a little bit with your brush that gives you some leverage for you to pull it apart and I'm going to do that because mine's split in the middle I'm going to do that on this side as well. Like that. And that's it. And leave that to dry. Okay. So we're just going to put that to one side. Um, to dry. And I will come back and share that with you. Now, you don't have to use something hard plastic like that you can use a paper bag so i've got one here i'm just going to lay this liquid on it this mixture i'm going to go over the newspaper because it didn't put the sheen on it that i wanted But it's great, you can do this with lots of different papers. You know, if you've got normal, t in fact, I've got some tissue paper I might actually use. Let me just see if I've got the tissue. I did have some. Yes, there we are. I've got some vintage tissue paper here. Which I'm going to cut in half. So just bear with me a minute. And we'll do a couple of these um, and they're like uh, see-through it makes it see-through let me just put that there spread it out as much as you can like that I 
because this is tissue it should be a little bit better to handle it's thicker than the normal one and then like we say just go over it it really doesn't matter if this creases in it it makes it all the more interesting Your scrapbooking will also be interesting. When you've done that, leave that to dry. But I'm going to show you with the one I've already done. Now, I got up this morning and I was feeling shocking. It was like I was coming down with something. But I've took my tablets, my uh, vitamins and whatnot, and had my hot drink of uh, lemon and uh, turmeric. Um, I've got it on the website uh, here on the channel. And it should bring up the drink that you can have. If you have it daily, it keeps a lot of things at bay. And it really does. But I haven't taken it for the last couple of days because I've been so busy and regret it because straight away I started to feel poorly um, and like flu like, not flu like, but cold like symptoms. And I'm thinking, no, you silly buggy. So I've been taking my own mixture, which my daughter introduced me to. Okay, and that's all it is. Put that to dry and it, it kind of like goes um, see through. Uh, and it's really good for your scrapbooking thing So there you go another thing for you to play around with Um you could also let me just see Because I might have some somewhere bear with me. Here we are. I've got some here and um, you can do it with fabrics I'm just gonna cut a small piece You can do it with cheesecloth Cheesecloth is quite good. I like the way it does it with cheesecloth so again, I'm just going to, when you start, you can't stop because you want to test everything. <laughs> okay, so just give it a mix. Again, all over. You mix a batch and it lasts for a while. Okay, so we're just going to pop that on. You have to really soak it, but you'll see tomorrow when I show you it. Good. I'm going to leave some spare at the top so you can see the difference. But play around. You can do mosaic wall, uh, walls, pictures, you know, anything and everything. I'm going to leave that to dry. We do sell these mats, by the way. They're very durable um, and they last a long time. I'm just going to pop that down there. Right, good morning everyone. Now, we're going to test this and see if it works. I've let it dry overnight. I can see some crackling to it and it uh, needs bending a little bit. But I'm not sure if it's worked. But we're going to use the patina, which is the um, artist paste. And this is the pent art one. You just need to get a little bit of a... Uh, on your tissue like I say it is a paste and then you rub it on all over 
Now, I always say with things like this, it will either work or it won't. <laughs> That's the case with everything, isn't it? And it has got some cracking. Right, okie dokie. So I'm just going to fold that in like that and then rub off the excess. Yeah, it has cracked, as you can see. And we'll just have to rub this off. Not many cracks. There's smaller cracks underneath, very, very tiny ones. But I'm okay with that. There's some um, pitting that's gone off there. You can see that pitting. Just lighten that a little bit and left the edges dark. Like you say, you don't need much for that to happen. Now, what I'm going to do is start and put on. I'm, I'm happy with that. I mean, yeah, it is some little bits of pitting all over. But I think that was caused through the um, heat gun. Now what I'm going to do is to attach some of this just so that we can finish this tutorial and I've got my uh, paper that I was starting yesterday it's dried overnight and I'm going to share that with you after this so what I'm going to do is take hold of the uh, let's see which one I want to do this time oh I think we'll do the bobbly one shall we yeah I think we'll do the bobbly one do a different one Again, using this do and dry modelling paste. It's kept fresh because I kept it airtight. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of fresh with that. Roll some out. I'll take half of that. Roll some out like that. Just try and roll it out first. We're going to use a larger section. Of course. Now we don't need this too long. I'm going to get my metal ruler to um, help slice that. I'm just going to use my other ruler to press down. I want to get make sure I get into the nooks and crannies of it. And I'm going to shave off, tilt it forward slightly and it slides across the rubber evenly and better like that then we're going to release that on both sides if possible and uh, pull that out I'll make sure that sticks. Take that bit off. Right, so I'm going to do that again. Oops, take off any loose bits in there. pick up my plastic ruler just to make sure that is flattened in there then again take my metal ruler tilt it and scrape that off like that and then I'm going to 
unpick it like that. It just helps to lift it out like that. And then we're going to do this side. So again, just going to do that. Actually, I'll sit in there. And this is the better end, so we'll start on the better end. And we're going to move that up, taking into account that it may just um, shrink slightly. Like that. Fine with that. Oops. That's fine. Now, we can leave that to dry, but I'm going to colour it using the patina. It's a Pentart, the liquid patina, and this is the... Um, it's like a dark brown. Now, what I'd like to do with mine is because I hit waste. Give it a good shake. Turn it upside down. Use a fine-ish brush. So I've got this one. Kind of flat. <laughs> and then start on the edge. And as you touch the clay, it runs into it. It bleeds into the clay. Now, I'm not going to do too much to it because, again, like I said, um, it's still wet, is the clay. So that clay really has to dry. But what I will do is just to share with you just how it'll look by adding a touch of this. Doesn't it make it look nice? That won't stop it from drying or anything like that. Mm. 
And there you go. That's how you do it. And blathered in the bloody stuff again. Huh. So we've got that one and then we have that one that can be made into plaques. Now it's the same napkin, but this looks plumper to me. Don't know why. I'm just going to rub over some of the wax again to match this one. Just to darken it a little bit more. And then all you do, find a clean section and just rub that. That's more like a matching pair, isn't it? So that can now be made into a, a plaque of some sort. And we'll come back and I'll share that with you when it's totally done and finished. Because I have a couple of ideas I might want to do with them. For now, we'll leave them as is. So I did say I was going to come back and share with you some of the papers, um, so I'll take them off in front of you. Let me put my clay away and seal it up again. Always seal your clay up. It is vitally important. I uh, need to get a, a big tub for mine, to be honest, um, which I have one downstairs, I think. Take all the air out of the bag you put it in. And as much air as you can take out. Like that. So, uh, for now, that's done. Out the way. Let me just clear up. We're going to reveal these papers. That we made yesterday. Let's clean my metal one off. Really handy to have, they're very thin and can slice for you. Okie dokie, so I showed you these yesterday. These were the ones I made the other day. And now I um, will reveal these. Now this one, which was, this has already had one coat on it. And you just peel it off, it's as easy as that. Again, it is durable and you can do quite a bit with it. It's a lot more durable than what it was. So I don't mind that. This was the lace one, remember? And you basically just peel it off. And it does form like a protective coat over it. So sheen to one side and not on the other. So that can now be incorporated into your projects as well. Happy with that. This was the tissue paper one. This was the before. You see it's quite delicate. Um, and this is the after one, but it's a little bit more robust. It does that was the bit that's not been touched but the difference is that can you see spread that out it'll give it a different color different texture it's not as brittle if you know what I mean a bit more robust and it's just got a different texture to it and you can screw it up and do whatever you like with it and then use it in your scrapbooking now the more layers you put on it I don't know, the easier you can use it, I would imagine. See, that's not got it on, that has got it on. Becomes opaque. So that is that one. I should put these to one side up there. And that was just used with a plastic bag. So a good way of using up your old bags. Again, this was the newspaper one. It's just more aged, isn't it? just looks more aged and feels like it and sounds like it so i'm quite thrilled with that one and again that was using a plastic rubbish bag 
and then we have the napkin one and i did say to you push it to one side because it eases it when you want to peel it off and yeah your napkin becomes um it's shiny on one side but you can still paint it on this side and i do like them it's really nice texture as well so easy to sew up so you can and you can actually sew them you can sew all of this so if i wanted to put that like that just say for instance like that putting the two birds together um i could sew around that and then stuff it so you can sew it and it won't rip because it's, it's glued i mean obviously it will rip at some point but if it's sewn and you put enough layers on of the glue it won't yeah so i could uh use that on a bauble or something like that so i do like them and it's just that's just using the plain clear glue but you can use pva glue which it would be a little bit thicker as well because pva glue dries clear so i hope that's helpful